Hey everybody, I'm Yvonne Williams with Back to Earth Creations and in this video I want to show y'all how to make a bunch of very easy beginner friendly chainmail earrings. So let's get started. So to make the earrings that we're going to be doing in today's project, you only need a couple of different tools and materials. These are my favorite pliers. These are stepped flat nose pliers from Rio Grande and these are I think Beadalon or I don't know, the glitter line, whoever that is, it's linked down below. All the tools and materials will be linked down below. But these are just some bent nose pliers. Some people like to use two flat nose, um, two bent nose, two chain nose. Just uh, kind of experiment and see however you like. You can see here I've actually modified the handles of mine so that my pinky can be engaged as well. Whereas some pairs of pliers, uh, this was the like, original length of the handle and your pinky kind of floats there. And if you're doing long hours of weaving... It can be really nice to have that extra support. And this was done with thermoplastic over some of these were like $6 pliers. And uh, I like them better than some of those. Well, <laughs> I like the budget better and the it, the comfort is comparable now to some of those like $30 to $60 pliers. But um, anyways, so find some pliers that don't have teeth because that will mark up your rings. So both of these are smooth jawed pliers. So other than that, use whatever is comfortable for you. And this is a kit that I had actually purchased on Amazon from American Chainmail. We've bought from them in the past and I've always been very pleased with um, both their bright and anodized aluminum. At least I think I'd gotten my anodized from them. I don't know if they still carry it or not. Don't quote me on that. Um, but this kit was less than $30 for all of these rings and the storage compartment. Now the rings came in their own little marked baggies, but I was um, fiddling about and using all of them. So I went ahead and opened up all of the bags and I'm very pleased. And then we also have some surgical steel ear hooks. These are 301 surgical steel, so they are safe for folks with uh, nickel allergies though everybody's different so you know your body better than anyone if you have super duper sensitive ears i recommend niobium they're a bit a good bit more expensive but uh they'll do you right and then just some little ear backs whatever kind you're into so going through if you're very, very new to chain mail, which this video is geared towards if you've never woven mail before, um, you're gonna want to start by just familiarizing yourself with opening and closing the rings. The jump rings that are used for chain mail are actually all that I use anymore, whether I'm doing beadwork or any kind of jewelry, um, just because they're so much more substantial than the little jump rings that would come in like the uh, jewelry kits and stuff. So printouts like this. This one's from Chainmail Joe, which he has a fantastic um, kit on Amazon that I'll link as well that's a bit bigger than this one in its um, quantity and diversity, but uh, he presents all of the ring sizes that they use as well as recommended aspect ratios for each uh, weave style. But this is just super ha handy to have on hand because wherever you order your rings from, even if you get some from like Joann's or Michael's, um, whenever Randy and I used to coil and cut our own rings, we gauged our ring size off the size of mandrel that it was made on. So our 16 gauge 5 16 aluminum was not exactly the same size as our 16 gauge 5 16 stainless steel even though they were both coiled on the same mandrel the metal had a little bit of spring back so there was some variation there a printout like this can really help you avoid any confusion because then it didn't matter if you made your rings yourself or if you bought them from somebody or from somewhere you can put them on this little paper and kind of see the actual inner diameter and these rings are a true um 16 gauge 5 sixteenths so now also it gets kind of complicated whether it's American wire gauge or standard wire gauge but I do believe that this is correct so you can kind of see there um there's also a link on our website to the 
a printout from the ringlord.com that has just about every single ring size. <clears throat> so it's a little bit more expansive than this one, but uh, I like that this one was from Chain Mojo. <laughs> it was just perfect, a nice little size. So I've gone through with each of our different ring sizes that are here in the tray because, um, again, if you're new to chain mail, what does gauge mean? What does inner diameter mean? <laughs> like some of these things, even if you understand the term, sometimes seeing it demonstrated uh, can really help you visualize and see the difference between uh, two different gauges even though they're the same inner diameter they're two different gauges and that can give you a very different look in your piece so you can see oops and i'm just gonna bump the tripod a whole bunch today so here you can see this one let's see which one is that one two three four five six seven three. this is their 16 gauge three sixteenths uh rings woven into a mobius wire which i'll show you how to do this in just a sec and this is their 18 gauge 3 16 mobius flower so you can see there even though the rings are technically the same size with their inner diameter which is the size of the space made on the inside of the ring uh, it still gives you really different effects having those different gauges and so knowing that, just kind of familiarizing yourself with that. And once you've made these, you can kind of link them all together and have a really cool looking like gradiated chain from largest to smallest. And it's just a nice little reference to always have on hand. So the first project that we're going to be doing is some Mobius flower earrings. So I'm going to show you how to make these first off. So each Mobius flower, I use a minimum of three rings. And we're going to start by closing one of the rings. You can see here the way that the rings are shaped. They're like this because whenever they're being made, you uh, typically the artisan will make a long, long coil onto a rod. So you can see how those rings stack together. And then you feed it through either hand sawing or using something like a ringinator or a coil cutter to go through there with a jeweler's grade saw and just slice those rings so even if they're fresh out of the bin they're still going to need closed unfortunately the only things that you're really doing in chain mail are opening and closing rings so you have plenty of opportunity to practice so let's zoom in just a bit nope that didn't work did it okay maybe if i go like this there we go. Sorry, y'all. I'm just a professional. <laughs> so I am going to scooch these guys just off to the side. I know that they're just like, <laughs> I'm a monster. Um, <laughs> so you can see how it's sitting like this. And we're going to come in. And I prefer to hold my rings where I have multiple points of contact as opposed to if I were to hold with just the tips of my pliers, because this doesn't give you a whole lot of support and leverage. Whereas if you're holding in two separate points, that really gives you a lot more control over the ring. And so I'm gripping quite firmly because I don't want my pliers to slip and I'm wiggling back and forth adding just a little bit of inward pressure because even though when Randy and I coiled and cut our own rings, uh, we used a saw blade that was like 0 0.001 of an inch. And there's still, there's that tiny bit of material that's removed by the saw blade. And so you want to close that gap because the goal here is to make the ring look and feel. So you can feel, if you have, I, I have better tactile sense than I do eyesight. So I like to come through and kind of pet my rings and make sure there's no little pokey spots or anything like that but you want to get your rings to look and feel like they're one continuous piece. Now, some folks do go through and weld their stuff, but I don't know if that's appropriate for a beginner project. Um, so we have our closed ring. And now whenever we open a ring, because we'll need to open the other two for this design, we're going to take it and open it just like that. 
So you can kind of see if you look at it from just so, it still looks like a perfect circle. And that's going to help whenever we've woven and closed this to keep its nice shape and everything. If you have a ring, let's let's brutalize one real quick. Um, sometimes folks will open their rings up like this. Which is, I mean, technically that's an open ring. Um, but you're gonna, it gets kind of difficult to try to bend that back into shape. And it's always going to be just a little bit more oblong. That one actually didn't come out too bad, but, um, it's, it's better on the ring to open it, um, this way instead of this way because the more pressure that you bend the metal like let's say you messed up on the weave and you got to do it again the more pressure that you add side to side is going to make brittle points in your rings and you can see how that just doing that little bit really distorted it so um whereas you can open and close them just about all day like this so we're, we've opened the, the one and closed the one. So now we're gonna go ahead and open up the third ring just to get it prepped and ready. So you can see I have them sitting here on the table and I'm gonna come through and place this open or closed ring onto this open one, just like that. And then we're going to close it. And so just plopping it back down on the table, you can see how they overlap. And chain mail is a fiddly thing. It's good to play with and kind of get to know how the rings like to lay and interact with each other. So I'm going to take this third ring and hook it through both. We don't want it to be hooked through just one. I mean, that is technically still chain mail, but that's not what we're doing here. I think that weave isn't. So we're hooking through both, and I'm going to close this, and then I just plop it onto the table. And right now it doesn't really look like much of anything, but if you kind of poke it a bit, and let's flop this ring over, just like that, and you can kind of poke it, and it starts to look like a little rosette, or a little knot, or a little Mobius flower is what I call them. But you could ask 10 different chain mailers what a weave is called and get 15 different answers. So um, <laughs> it's more about what it actually ends up looking like than what you call it. Um, I do recommend mailartisans.org uh, for checking out um, all sorts of different weaves and things. But Reddit's a thing now too. There's Facebook groups, all sorts of stuff. But it is good to familiarize yourself with the common names of things, but, uh, okay. <clears throat> so, let me pull. I actually made notes to try to <laughs> streamline this for you guys, instead of me just getting distracted by squirrels the whole time. <clears throat> so, to turn this into a piece of jewelry, here I have two different earrings that I wanted to show you kind of with this same weave how you can accomplish two variations. And if you had anodized or different metal tones, you could mix different tones together or just get a wider variety for if you're making inventory for your booth or website. But um, this one here is a three petal Mobius flower, just like how we just made, same ring size and everything. And uh, you can see here I have written down it's going to get confusing if I just say it out loud a whole bunch, so they're written for your reference. Um, but then this guy made from a thinner gauge, it's the 18 gauge 5 sixteenths. Um, there are five rings there stacked together in the same exact way. And the way that we would have done that is just like how we added that third ring through the other two, you then add a fourth through all three. Like you keep threading your ring through that center part to get that kind of effect. So to turn this into an earring, we're going to get two of our 18 gauge 3 16 out of our tray and one of our 18 gauge 1 8 inch 
out of our tray and one of our ear hooks and that's why I really really recommend even if you're even if you're an old pro at chainmail getting a kit like this is fantastic because if you're traveling or you want like something that whenever a friend comes over they can uh, be working out of that tray or it's just really nice to have that variety of ring sizes because um, I've been weaving chainmail for gosh like over a decade at this point and there are ring sizes in this tray that I just never really used because that's not what I was used to using so it's not what I would purchase and it's a lot of fun y'all to work with ring sizes that you don't typically work with um gets you some cool variety in your pieces so we're going to come through and open up these two smaller rings and open up that very smallest and I'm going to hook let's see if I can get the focus working okay I'm going to hook this small ring through all three and close and hook the second small ring again through all three and if you're having difficulty with this you may need to open your rings up just a little bit more I'm you don't want them I mean it's not going to hurt anything but you don't necessarily need to be opening your rings at like a 90 degree um because that can complicate more intricate weaves that you might get into later on but around like a 45 to 60 degree angle of opening can really be um, effective so that's how that one looks just so you can kind of get an idea of how wide I open mine but truly I cannot emphasize enough if the weave comes out correctly and it's comfortable to wear um, then you did it right <laughs> so we're gonna use this small ring to hook through both of those you could just use one but I think the two rings makes it look a little bit more substantial and then we're gonna hook that through the ear hook and give that a nice closure and so there you can see these are what Randy and I call Mobius flower earrings and you could leave them as they are or if you have the tools on hand, you could make little wire wrapped bead links hanging down or hang a charm. You could use another two, like kind of replicate that design with the two um, 18 gauge 3 16 and the one 18 gauge 1 8 inch off the other end to attach a charm or something or, you know, just anything, anything that you might like. You could just hang a little cluster of chain at random lengths off the ends. To give it a little bit more of an elegant look so there's one pair of earrings and we would do these ones exactly the same which again let's, let's get some more practice in because this is going to be a little bit of a longer video but i really want you all to have a good solid grasp of weaving chain mail by the time it's done at least the beginner weaves and the more you familiarize yourself i feel like um with these more simplistic weaves the better um the better rate of success you're going to have later on with more intricate weaves because you're kind of going to be building up your brain plier coordination and just um you know baby stepping yourself into it i feel like can be a lot more effective and rewarding than just you know yeeting yourself into the abyss and being like good luck everybody else so we're going to close that ring and we're going to open up the other four two, three, and four. I really love having my rings prepped up before I start weaving, just because it makes me feel like I'm all prepared and then everything comes together smoothly and then the cat jumps on the table and it's a nightmare. It's a good day. So we're gonna open up two of the 18 gauge 3 16 and these ones here are the 18 gauge 5 16 and then another 18 gauge 1 8 inch this one right here this ring size is probably my absolute favorite all-purpose jump ring for attaching clasps ear hooks um just connection points whether i'm making chain mail or wire wrapping or bead stringing or uh, bead weaving any of that like i love it and if i'm doing something uh that I really need to be stable, I'll double up on them. Okay, 
So we have our four open and our one closed. And I'm going to come in here, picking up our one closed and placing that onto an open ring. And you can do that with your hands or just however you like. I'm using my pliers so that my big meaty hands aren't in the way. Okay, and then we're going to wiggle that closed. I do like to hear that click if I can help it. It just helps me to know that we've got a nice closure there. And then take those two rings, pick up the third, put them both on the third, and close it. You didn't get a click, but it still looks good. And so again, you can kind of see here, whoops. <laughs> Just kind of poke it and prod it around until it looks like that. Like sometimes picking up and throwing it on the table and then poking it a little bit more um, can be surprisingly effective. And then I place my finger on it, pull it to the edge of my table and pick it up. That way it's still how I want it. Put right there in that kind of Venn diagram in the center and I put all three onto the fourth and close it. And so you can kind of see here how each one ring is stacking on the other ones. So that can give you better, um, maybe some pattern recognition to look for. I really like the four petal in this size, but let's go ahead and add the fifth. If you don't like it in yours, you can always take the fifth ring off. And again, just hooking the fifth ring through the other four and closing, giving it a pet to make sure it's good. and setting it down. And that ring is just kind of like poking off weird to the side. So I'm just gonna whoop, flip it over. And that's looking pretty good, I like that. And so now we're going to thread this ring through all five. Now, the reason I choose this size of ring is because I can comfortably fit all five rings through. Um, the 18 gauge 1 8 inch wouldn't be appropriate for this I don't think because you can't really fit all of the other rings inside of it and there still be a nice like wiggle because I like a nice dangly earring you know um, but sometimes you might want something that's crazy like tense to be able to make it maintain its shape or you know anything like that so we've hooked on through those two rings and then hooked on our ear hook and there we have what I think is a very nice little Mobius flower earring. Now again, you, you might be able to imagine if you'd used multiple colors or a variegation of like um, maybe aluminum and stainless steel, you know, kind of different tones of gray. Your, your creativity is limited or limitless. <laughs> your creativity is not limited on this. Um, so do all the things, try them out and see if you like it. And if you don't, you can take it apart. And also from a vending perspective, oftentimes something that is not my favorite could be somebody else's favorite. So uh, I, I always try to not limit myself um, because I am very limited by my own creativity <clears throat> and style and, you know, oh, I like that or oh, I don't like that. And I try to branch out a little bit and get out of my comfort zone because that kind of kind of diversifies our product line quite a bit. Now these guys here are probably, I it, they're hard to capture laying down, but whenever they're hanging just so, they look like little crescent moons. Like, they kind of hang like that. And so I'm gonna show you guys how to make this. Again, I have written in super fancy, high tech um the ring sizes that we're using so let's prep up our materials first i'm using the 16 gauge 7 16 which is the largest ring that comes in this kit size and then a 16 gauge 9 30 seconds which you could go with something a little bit smaller i liked using the same gauge though um just because it makes it look a little bit more like the same piece when it's hanging from the front it's a little bit of an optical illusion and then I'm going to be using the 18 gauge 5 30 seconds and that is four of those rings one two three and four 
So on this design, good closures are paramount. Like that is the main focus of this one. And if I were using copper, I would totally try soldering this. Like if you're into metal smithing but you're new to chainmail, this would be a perfect project for that. Just coming through. And sometimes there might be a little bit of excess hanging off. You can kind of see on the inside there of that ring. And that's just a byproduct of cutting. You can come in and burnish that off with your pliers. So getting just as good of a closure as what you can manage. And I really like how those rings kind of fit inside of each other. Makes me very happy. <laughs> but now we're going to open all four of these rings. One, two, three, and four. <clears throat> and just with any of these designs that I'm showing you, you could add beads. This would look super cool, like a little moonstone dangle hanging off of that bottom ring or something. Like, I think that'd be really neat. So I'm going to hook all three rings, all three of these smaller rings, onto both of these. So there's one. There's two, and there's three. <clears throat> and now I'm going to take our fourth small ring, hook through all three. And whenever you're making earrings, I do try to make them match. So on this one, you can see the smaller ring is set behind. So without that fourth ring in there, I'm going to push it. I could have just flipped it over, but um, pushing so the smaller ring is behind because once we have that fourth ring in there, there's not really enough room for, whoops, <clears throat> for these rings to shift around. So it's going to maintain its positioning there. And that's just something to be mindful of whenever you're attaching your ear hook because there will be a front facing and a back facing side to each of your pieces. <clears throat> and that's just a design element, and quite frankly, sorry, I didn't mean to cough in your ear. Um, if you like it better, flip it around. That gives a very different effect, I think. Actually, I might like that one better. I don't know. <laughs> so it's as easy as just flipping around your ear hook. But that is how to make these earrings here. And, oh gosh, you could get into all sorts of stuff. You could use a ball-peen hammer. Like, if you soldered, if these were copper, and you soldered them, and you went through then and, like, added a lot of cool texture with, like, a ball-peen hammer, you could do a textured outer ring and a nice smooth inner ring. Square-cut wire rings would look super cool for this. Um, so, again, it's a really great opportunity to embrace the simplicity of the design and add layers of detail through texture or color or um, even uh, bright aluminum and acid etched aluminum. Like, I don't know, it'd be, it'd be cool, y'all. And this also, too, if you are um, new to making jewelry or you, you're trying to build up making inventory for like in a booth or something, um, earrings like this I've found for Randy and I in our business are a great way to build up very affordable we sell all of our earrings at like a base price of five dollars we could sell them for less but earrings are kind of where we make up for um the smaller profit margin on our more time consuming pieces and folks especially if it's handmade and it's got you know the good ear wires and stuff seem to be perfectly willing to pay five dollars um but it's a great way of building up affordable quick to make inventory that um sells pretty well and it gives you a lot of nice practice and stuff and you can add a lot of variety just by adding different stones or metal colors or all that so it's i don't know hopefully hopefully this is helpful to you guys because there's enough overwhelming stuff with um setting up a booth for craft shows or conventions or art shows and stuff that um you don't want to if you can remove something that you're worried about 
That's fantastic. Also, please pardon me. It's lonely during quarantine, and I am rambly. <laughs> so, um... Again, these are the ring sizes that we're using. Each of these three rings, this is going to be a very simple design. It's um, a one-two chain. So there's one ring into, I guess, yeah, run ring into two, into one, into two, into one, into two, into one. So, but it's um, a great introductory weave into weaving flat sheet mail because you could do a four in one or an eight in one i don't know the names can get confusing but you could duplicate this off to the sides and make it look like a grid with little connection points going between each uh, circle um you could offset them from each other and make little diamond shapes and everything but this is the core concept that can be built upon for this style of chain mail so we are using their 16 gauge 1 4th inch rings and we're going to be using three of them and then we are also using we're connecting with the 18 gauge 5 30 seconds i try to use as small of a ring as i can get away with here that still gives everything a nice dangle and drape and movement so there'll be two, four, and six of those. And then I'm going to be connecting with an 18 gauge, one eighth inch, just because I feel like it. You can use whatever you like. So we're going to come through first and close all of our large rings. And this is something that on this design, you could make it longer if you wanted. You could um, use a small, medium, and large ring. You could use a large, medium, and small, or uh, a variation of like five, like from largest to smallest, or smallest to large, largest, um, and just really get wild and creative with it. Like there, I, I can't emphasize enough how how much uh, variation can really spice this up. Okay, so we have all three of those closed, and now I'm going to come through and open all of our rings. Well, all of our small. One, two, three, four, five, six. And then I'm going to open this one up and keep it over by the ear hook so that I try to keep everything in its little sections. So I'm going to, whoops, pick up one of our we're going to ignore this ring for a bit. These are our small, these are our large. Um, one of our small and hook on two of our larges, just like that. And I'm going to close it. And now I'm going to take another small and hook through the same two large and close it. And so now I'm going to grab just one of the rings, one of the large, and let the other one hang down. Just like that and then I'm going to take one of the small and hook through a large and then I'm going to put on another large and then I'm going to close it holding on to those two large and letting the rest of the weave just hang down I'm gonna hook through again just like that and close it and now you could, that might happen, and if it does, congratulations, you've learned like a European style weave that's like Viper scale or something, I don't know, I don't know what it's called, but I like it. But that's something for another day. If you guys like this video and would like to get into more intricate weaves um, for kind of beginner earring designs, please let me know down in the comments. But we're just going to be doing this today. Just the very, very simple chain. And now I'm going to hook through the one large and close it. And again, hook through the one large and close it. And now we're going to take that 18 gauge 1 8 inch and hook through those two small with our extra small and then attach the ear hook. And close.
And so again, super straightforward. They make a really pretty piece and you could use aluminum or steel and copper. Again, you could do a whole lot of copper. Uh, I love using copper in earrings because um, you don't have to worry about it tarnishing or leave, turning your skin green because it's an earring. Like other than the ear hook, it's not making contact with your skin. So you can do all sorts of interesting patinas and different things and all sorts of stuff. So there's that design. And now we have two more designs that I was going to go through with y'all today. Oof, this one, this next design, is a little more... It's intricate only in that it's using, using a huge variety of rings. <clears throat> but with a kit like this, you don't have, like, that's fine. <laughs> so here you can see, we are using... Let's get that. The very largest rings that come in the kit, the 18 or 16 gauge, 7 16 I personally think a 14 gauge would have been lovely for this, but this is what we have, and honestly, I still think it looks pretty good. And I'm gonna be using 18 gauge 7 30 seconds to connect. So I'll need two of those for right there and then eight sixteen gauge five sixteenths we'll need three of those now if you go to our chainmail curated toolkit on our website which there will be a link down in the video description i have um an image of the ring lord printout that has highlighted all of the rings that randy and i use most frequently so anytime that I buy in bulk, those are the ones that I are my go-tos because I know I use them for darn near everything. Um, and you're going to be different than us, and I, I I know that. And but it's we we get questions a lot about well, what do we use? So that's just to kind of preemptively answer that question. But I would hate to limit somebody off of well, this is what I use because that is not the only way, like at all. <laughs> Um, so our next connection size is going to be 18 gauge 3 16 and then our next size is 18 gauge 7 30 seconds is to make this Mobius flower so we're gonna grab three more of those and then 20 gauge 9 64 <laughs> because chicken nuggets. Uh, I don't actually know what this stuff is in the metric system. I measure in chicken nuggets, apparently. Um, <laughs> so the, but fortunately, all these numbers that I'm saying, they have charted up on the lid of the box. So it's very easy to, um, to sort out. Okay, so we've got those three. No, two, because those are what I'm connecting with. Gotcha. And then 18 gauge, 1 8 inch to connect to the ear hook. So now that we have all of this plotted out, I'm going to start by weaving our Mobius flowers. So opening one. I'm going to kind of move this off to the side, but still on screen so y'all can see it and write it down. And then closing the other two. So there's one. And there's two. And then I'm going to open our two connector rings. Again, I just like to go through and get everything prepped. And then I'm going to... Oh, I did that backwards, didn't I? <laughs> I needed one closed and two open. So I'm going to close this one, and then open, and open, then I'm going to open these two, boop, and boop, and then I'm going to do the closed ring. open and open 
and then open these last three as well. I feel like this is the equivalent of getting all of your ingredients pre-cut and prepped and measured before you start actually cooking. Um, and it just kind of helps expedite everything. So now we're going to take, I'm starting at the bottom, just because, placing that closed ring onto an open, and then closing it. And then we're going to thread our third open through both of those, and close it. Plop it down, poke it a bit. And now I'm going to go up to the next Mobius flower, skipping those connectors for now. I want to get all the Mobius flowers woven first, I think. Closing it. Poking the third through both. And closing. There we are. And now, putting that closed onto an open. Again, skipping the connectors. We're now working with the 18 gauge 730 seconds for our smallest Mobius flower on this earring. Which this is another reason why I do like to have all of those Mobius flowers pre-made um, is because I can go through like how, how I kind of showed you this, this mess that I've made <laughs> over to the side is I can kind of take them and sort them out and be like you know, do I like this pattern together? Do I like this ring size better with that one? Um, it just gives me a really nice reference tool to be able to design with. Okay, almost like color swatches, but for chainmail, <laughs> or paint swatches, or fabric swatches. So we're gonna take our largest Mobius flower and hook our 18 gauge 732nd connectors onto one Mobius flower and then on to the next. And again, I wanted a ring size that I could fit both Mobius flowers through and still have some nice wiggle and movement. And then I'm going to use our second connector that I didn't quite open wide enough to fit comfortably. So there's through that Mobius flower and now through the other Mobius flower. And you just wanna be careful to not be accidentally only hooking one of the rings from the Mobius flower, because that's not really going to hang correctly. You just you want to catch all the rings and then close it. So that looks pretty cool. And you could truly just do that as an earring too. Oop. Looks like a little snowman or something. Okay, so now we're going to add the third Mobius flower. So hooking the connector ring through our medium and then onto our small Mobius flower. You could have used the same size connector ring all the way up, um, but I kind of liked using, uh, continuing the gradient theme from large to small as I went up, not just in the Mobius flowers, but in the connecting points as well. So we threaded that through on both. This one's pretty snug, I'm not going to lie. Um, that's okay, though. <clears throat> and now for these last two connector rings, open it up just a little bit wider. I'm just going to hook them on and then close them. So again, opening it up just a little bit more just to be able to weave comfortably. Like, if you're struggling getting a ring to fit, try opening it wider or maybe closing it just a hair or uh, just something. So, now hooking our last ring through those two and then onto our ear hook. And that's a pair of earrings. Now we have one more design that I wanted to go over with y'all. That is a little bit of a merger and mix up of two of the other designs that we've done. 
So here you can see we've done, it's a 3-3 three, three chain or a 6-6, six, 6-3, six, six, I don't know. There's three rings hooked to three rings, 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 hooked to a little like crescent moon get up down at the bottom. Uh, so <laughs> to do this, let's pick our rings first. And this is a design that I actually absolutely love using a different metal tone for if there's three rings on each link section using like aluminum, copper, aluminum. And then the next three would be like aluminum, copper, aluminum. It gives like a really cool color inlay um, that's very fun to work with and very pretty. Okay, so we have 18 gauge, three six, three eighths, sorry. Uh, for our largest ring, so boop, plop that one down, and then 16 gauge, I have it written, do what's written, I don't know if I'm saying 18 or 16, <laughs> 16 gauge 3 sixteenths for the center of the moon, just to mix it up a little bit, that's different from our last design, but that's fine, and then we're using 20 gauge 5 30 seconds for all of these rings, it's 1, 2, 3, 4, 5, 6, so that'll be 18 of those rings and I'm just gonna grab a pinch and then count them out as I'm opening them and then we're using an 18 gauge 5 30 seconds to connect to our ear hook okay so we're gonna start with again I'm just scooching this off to the side but it's still on screen so you can write it down if you'd like closing our two very large rings boop and just sitting them there like that and I'm gonna go ahead and open our thick small ring for attaching the ear hook get our ear hook up there too those are off screen but they're there I promise and now I'm gonna come through and open one two so this weave isn't particularly complicated, but a lot of the times with chainmail, what's challenging about it isn't necessarily and isn't necessarily the complexity of the weave, just the fact that there's so much of it. <laughs> like um, it becomes a feat of endurance more than anything, just trying to complete a necklace, or you know, because like a, one of my favorite beginner weaves is a spiral chain, which isn't necessarily good for earrings because it needs to be like bound on the ends to maintain its pattern. But whenever we're teaching classes, we teach spiral chain and even that gets tiring just whenever you're making, you know, a two foot long necklace, which is a pretty, that, that isn't even like a particularly long necklace. So, but you're still, you're having to hand weave every single link for two feet. That's a that's daunting. So, to kind of ease you into that, we're doing a very ring dense earring design. One, two, three, four, five. One, two, three, four, five, six. Nope, still need to. So, you can see this is quite a bit of. It is just opening and closing, but there's quite a bit of it going into uh, this pair of earrings. Because this, keep in mind, is just for one earring. Okay, so there we have all of that. Now I am going to show you an option that you could open half and close half. But I'm going to do that at the, like the end of the earring. Just because it can be a little, quite a bit to juggle sometimes if you're just starting out. Okay. So we're going to take our two large rings and hook them onto one of our thin small and close it. And now I'm going to take a second ring and hook it through both of those rings. And then I'm going to take a third ring and hook it through both of those rings. And now I'm going to take 
bunching these three rings together like that, I'm going to take another open and hook through all three of them and close it. And I'm going to let that one fall to the side and I'm going to pick up another ring and I'm going to hook it through all three and then I'm going to close it. And I'm going to let it fall off to the side and I'm going to hook on another ring through all three. Being careful to not thread through any of the other rings. I just want to be hooking through those three. So otherwise you start getting some interesting things happening that, while cool, aren't what we're shooting for right now. Unless you are, in which case do that. But <laughs> for the sake of the tutorial. Um, so we're going to pick up another ring, hook it through all three, and close it. Now, to me, it is essential to do it this way whenever um, maybe you're working with multiple colors just to help you keep on track. But as you gain more experience, you can get a little bit more into the speed weaving, which is what I'm going to show uh, here in just a minute. And you're just going to continue hooking one ring through the previous three. Hooking one ring through the previous three. And then hooking that third ring through the previous three. Okay. So you can see that kind of hangs nice and cute. It's got a little bit of, you know, nice dangle to it. So now to do the speed weaving, we would hook the one ring through the three. This is where I really like these bent nose pliers, is they let me comfortably hold while I add one, two, and three closed rings, and then closing it. So now there are six rings on that one closed. And now I'm going to take our second ring, and I'm going to hook through the first three that are sitting just like that. And then I'm going to hook through the additional three that we had added. It is very technically the exact same number of rings but it can sometimes by doing that additional uh, closing on the front end it can make things feel like they're going faster but that's entirely up to you as the weaver okay so we've hooked through those three and i'm going to hook through whoops and see like there i hooked through i didn't mean to hook that other uh ring so oh it's just a tangled mess isn't it so i'm going to remove the my new ring and re-thread it through. There we go. And close. So that is an option to keep in mind that if you think you'd like to give it a try, but if it's if it's not vibing with you, uh, just do it the other way. And so again, just like on the previous what piece we had done, we want to be mindful of how this is hanging in line. With the earring as opposed to offset so i'd like the other earring to mirror image it so how would we do that so i'm gonna have it hang like this let me gotta put down the duck weave here weave chain wheel so i'm gonna have it hanging kind of like that do you see how the the little center rings mirror each other and i don't know i'm i'm finicky about that stuff but it's your jewelry if you don't care then you know go go on with it or you can make it as just meticulous and symmetrical as you like so i'm just going to hook our 18 gauge 5 30 seconds ring through all three and then hook it through our ear hook and then close it and so y'all that is just a mess of earrings let's get them all laid out here together if you guys crafted along with us, be sure to, uh, if you're on social media, tag us on Instagram or Facebook so that we can see what you made. Uh, if you would like to be featured as one of our featured artisans, um, send us an email with a high quality picture of your work, um, a short artisan introduction, like, just be like, hey, I'm person from place and I do this thing or something. <laughs> I don't know. Um, 
and as well as links to where you would like for us to redirect folks to and we would love to share your artwork in our weekly newsletters and kind of feature you and whatnot so also be sure to sign up for our newsletter if you'd like to receive uh weekly emails and shop updates and when we have new tutorials and things like that so but yeah there's a mess of earrings <laughs> Hey guys, thanks so much for hanging out with me during this video. If you have any questions, comments, or ideas, please leave them down below. I love hearing from you guys. Um, if you enjoy our free tutorials and would like to support the creation of more of them, as well as receive all sorts of behind the scenes content, access to our exclusive weekend live streams, um, auction pre-sales, coupons, all sorts of stuff, as well as our monthly craft along kits, um, be sure to sign up for our craft along club or check it out. Uh, it's as little as a dollar a month or 12 bucks a year and it really makes a huge difference in what we do here on the channel um i think that's everything all the links and stuff are down in the video description below so again just check that out and uh, until next time y'all happy crafting Mwah. bye <laughs>